Now, joining us this morning, and thank you for, um, and my apologies, Sandra, um, for the delay this morning. We did have a little bit of a technical issue there, but we are all together now, is the Mayor of, Handra, uh, of Hastings District Council, Sandra Hazelhurst. Good morning to you, Sandra. Good morning, Michael. Sandra, you've been in the midst of this, it's now a week since, how did you first learn about this disaster? Uh, well, the week before, about the Thursday before, when we saw that um, Cyclone Gabriel was tracking towards us and wasn't stopping at Tairawhiti and was keeping going to Hawke's Bay, um, we'd stood up our civil defence emergency management and uh, were getting prepared. And it was a very hard to sort of judge how the enormity of the storm and how much was going to reach us and how much would just head off to out to the east, which is what was also tracking. So for mm. about five days before, uh, we're watching it very carefully. On the morning of the Tuesday morning, absolutely a week ago today, um, we saw what was happening with the challenges um, through uh, stop banks and waterways. And at two o'clock, I got a, mo uh, a message to say we need to declare a state of emergency. Uh, and by the time we did that. Uh, the the team came out because it's a it's a legal requirement that a mayor signs uh, that, and um, and so I couldn't get out of my property. Trees were down in our driveway, and so we had the staff climbing over trees to get me to sign the declaration for a state of emergency. So that seems a long time ago, like last year, but it actually it is a week ago. It's been one yeah, hell of a week. It sure has, and I have every sympathy with you in this particular case, obviously. Sandra, um, the, yeah. it, it seems it's the odd thing about it is, is the fractured nation, nature of dealing with a crisis like this. You've got the Otago Regional Council, who are, uh, sorry, the Hawke's Bay Regional Council who are coordinating and have all the stuff to deal when things go wrong, and then you've got you signing a state of emergency, and I guess also Kirsten Wise and Napier doing the same thing. Was there a coordination yeah. between the three agencies? Absolutely there was. So I rang me Kirsten and our, our officers gave the advice. They'd done their reconnaissance. They were seeing how quickly the rivers were rising and how they um, who were heading up the stop bank so quick, rapidly that we all uh, needed to declare together. And, and, so, and that's what happened. And so the Regional Council looks after Civil Defence Emergency Management as a group, and, uh, but us as territorial authorities mayors have to declare the state of emergency so that's how the act works but you know this is just this isn't about any of that really this is about um our 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 recovery and um moving from a, a state of national emergency into um making sure that we do best for our region for hastings and napier and central hawks bay and wide or uh, with our iwi partners to um to build back a better hawks bay and that's what our big focus is now uh, I guess one of the things, though, is that you've got you've just talked about basically five councils there. You've got the Hawke's Bay Regional Council, you've got Wairau, you've got Central Hawke's Bay, you've got Napier, you've got Hastings. Um, it sort of begs the question, do you need some form of coordinated response across all five of you if you're going to get that region back together again? Some sort of almost yes, overarching we body. Yes, we yeah, we absolutely do. And so we're in the process now of um, appointing a recovery manager uh, having a uh, recovery board, and that would be uh, us, and also having all of our local plans, because uh, you know all our, our our areas are different. So Napier is a city, and and we are a district of five thousand square kilometres. Our rural community is isolated and cut off still, and will be for months. So we we uh, you know our whole our whole all our needs are different, but. We have to have a coordinated response. It's, uh, this is a national emergency, so um, the government have their response plan. They announced some funding yesterday for uh, local and, and state highway roads of 250 million. And, and so we have to be coordinated as a region because all our infrastructure, roading, waters, rivers, all travels across the region. So it's a coordinated response from a region and then local plans to deliver each and every one's needs for their community. Um, That's the position that, that we've put to the Crown. Yeah, OK. So um, you're still going to have to negotiate through that position, I guess, because uh, Grant Robertson's been yes, appointed as the cyclone. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, and that's, you yeah, know, isn't yeah, that yeah. Because there's many parts of the North Island that have been impacted. It's not just Hawke's Bay. So yeah. uh, they have to have a, you know, a, a cyclone recovery um, minister. And uh, and then we have our local regional minister, which will be um, Minister Stuart Nash. He, he'll be our regional minister. But uh, there will be uh, Grant Robinson as the national minister. And But we are saying very strongly to the Crown that we want a regional plan and a regional delivery because we know what our region and our people need. Yeah, no, I think that makes sense. Um, the other thing is I've, I don't know if you've had time to read the newspaper this morning, um, Sandra, but there is an opinion piece written by one of the senior journalists from the New Zealand Herald um, which very much connects with you, perhaps, in terms of your responsibilities. And it's headline, Government Risk Losing Rural New Zealand Who Were Left to Fight Cyclone Ape Gabriel's Effects on Their Own. It's um, written by Adam Pearce, he's a senior New Zealand Herald journalist, and his basic argument is that the areas that are within your area, uh, Dartmoor, Pukatapu, Pukatitri, Rissington, Patoka, um, they, in actual fact, have been left alone for too long um, in their recovery. Um, they have to even purchase their own helicopter flights to get in and out, to rescue people, to get kids in and out, to get support in and out as well. Uh, and that really the re relief has let them down. Do you have some sort of empathy with that particular view? Oh, absolutely. Is as our rural communities have been impacted hugely, and you know, it's, uh, but what we have got, and and that. Uh, you know what a what nationally might not have been seen. We have got this amazing rural community board, and so we know exactly how many, uh, how many supplies of fuel. Every day we have a, a Zoom meeting with them. They say fuel's getting low, so now we've got a tanker coming into the Tipahui from Topo because that part of the state highway is open. So they've got a tanker of petrol coming in. So we know daily what their needs are, and and there's been. Yes, there's been private um, choppers going up there with private farm supplies that are required for the health of animals and well-being. Uh, we are working really hard to get a Bailey Bridge across the Rissington uh, Ridge. Well, this is a new bridge. <laughs> that, well, yeah. it's an old bridge, but the, that we had repaired. So a uh, access will happen, and that's going to happen in two weeks' time. There is a whole connected community of Pātoka, Pukitichu, Rissington, and they have community meetings every day to understand their needs. Those needs are then fed back uh, to our team and at HDC, Hastings Sister Council, and we are looking after them ourselves. There's a doctor and a nurse going up there to check in people's health. So, you know, this is a whole... We are doing that ourselves. We have a rural community board. They live in all of those areas. Uh, we've had Starlink satellites sent in, and and so the, everybody is now connected. We had a few days that we didn't know we had no connection to Lake Tuteta. This was really tra you know worrying us, and so mm -hmm. we got the choppers in, got this, got the satellites delivered, and then we were able to understand what their needs were. Um, and the other issue, of course, has been, and it's become something of a political issue in the last 24 hours, is obviously the stent, extent of law and order issues there. It seems to affect more Napier and perhaps Wairau and Gisborne than Hastings, I don't know, but you might be affected as well. Certainly your rural communities have been setting up roadblocks um, and have been told that they shouldn't, but they are anyhow, um, re regards to looting. What's your perspective of this as the Mayor of Hastings, Sandra? Uh well, it's first and foremost, it's devastating and, and disgraceful, actually. That's my personal opinion. And to think that people in the state of um, trauma and huge need and come into the realisation that they may have lost their home and to have to worry about that. Um, so the, the community have stepped up. They've done an amazing job, but we need the military police, and that's the stuff that we've followed up yesterday. Uh, when we heard that this had happened on Sunday night and uh, so Saturday night and Sunday night. Um, so we, we need some some more help. There's more police arrived yesterday. Uh, so that's the, that's the sort of stuff as um, the night protection. We can't have our vulnerable community having to do that work. So that, so you're, just, you you're know, saying things unfold. Yeah, I understand, but you're saying, Sandra, and certainly um, that's come through clear from 
elected members of the Hawke's Bay Regional Council yesterday, I'm sure there'll be other people throughout Hawke's Bay who'd be saying this as well. You want the military up there to patrol these areas, these vulnerable areas at night in particular, is that right? Military police, yes, absolutely. Because, you right. know, this is people are trying to get back into their homes now. They've been in town living with friends in Tano, so they want to get back and check in on their properties. And uh, so we, we, the police were, you know, overwhelmed with stuff to do in the in the cities, um, and you know the tracking of finding people that have been registered, four and a half thousand people trying to find their loved ones. Uh, there's been so much work for police, um, you know, having to deal with, um, you know, the um, fatalities. It's just it's been enorm- it's been enormous, but. Um, the defence force have been incredible, and and we know now that um, that we if we can get military police to man those cordons into the evenings uh, each night, we did have security on them, but the security were at risk. So um, yeah, really? we just we we need police. Mm. Security were at risk. Yep. Oh, it's yeah. So yes. you're saying from bad people who are out there doing yep. bad things and private security people yep. were there's at risk from them. Yes. So there's two wow. there's two main areas, um, two affected areas uh, that uh, once roads opened up, there was, you know, accessibility and uh, we needed to get on to that so straight which away. So which are those two areas? And, um, the Waihiki area oh, and yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Pukitapu area. Mm. So that Omaranui Road uh, and that big area, which has uh, been decimated, actually, um, just you know, uh, power lines are down, um, and the silt yesterday, as I uh, went out to see everybody, was uh, about three metres high on each side of the road. So the diggers had cleared the road so people could access, but the silt from the river. Uh, was about three metres that they dug off the road each side. So, um, um, so those are the two well, I was talk- areas. Yeah, no, understood. I was also talking to Hawke's Bay Fruit Growers Association yesterday. They say, well, it's ironic. We think about 20 to 30% of our orchards and city viticulture have been affected, but right as we talk now, we are picking. So in the midst of all yes. this, yes. they're trying to get their crops off. Yes, yes. And um, yeah, I went out to visit someone on Saturday and the, to show you to see their culverts and how the water was draining because, you know, you've got to get the intel now as you rebuild. And um, mm. and the, the man, the orchard just picked me the most beautiful apple that was going to be packed in three days' time. So it's incredible the parts of, you know, the, um, of our district where, you know, the apples are standing strong and where the cyclone didn't hit and... Um, so, you know, but the, the mess from the silt, um, particularly in the low-lying areas around Pukitapu um, and all the trees covered in the silt, they have about three days to get the silt away from the rootstock of the tree. They're all out there at the moment trying to save the trees and, and not worrying about the fruit in those areas because, you know, it's about, you know, the long-term yeah, yeah. sustainability and being able to continue with their, their livelihood. Um, I take it that yesterday's $250 million for roads, $50 million for businesses package, uh, the announcement of uh, Grant Robertson as the new Cyclone um, Recovery Minister, uh, that's just the start of it. Um, You, at some stage, will, I guess, through your regional body, have to be assessing how much money goes into which infrastructure. Do you have a priority there? Yeah, absolutely, we have a priority. So it'll be about... um Connectivity, uh, supporting industry, you know, and uh, getting getting people in the areas that are of isolation. So, um, it, when there is some two two different accesses way to a to an area to a suburb, um, obviously that won't be such a priority. But those ones who are absolutely cut off, and there's about fifteen hundred mm. to two thousand north of uh, Risington. So those would be the areas that we'll be prioritising, and. But it's getting our rural road network back up and running. Uh, there's been a lot of damage. Uh, there's about 30, 28 now roads um, out. There was 35. Uh, so we're getting wow. on to them. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, that's um, that, that, that's going to be huge. So, 
yeah, we, we're just putting all that together at the moment. Um, but at the moment, we also need to get our... We're working on getting our regional recovery manager so we can... There are a, a, a you know, government industry. He will be everybody at the uh, as we as we rebuild and uh, and make sure that we do um, do a great job at it. And that's our big big focus. Sandra, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, it's really important that New Zealand knows what's going on there. Um, I thank you for your time and for your effort, for your energy. I guess the only thing that we can provide you is money, right? Um, there's a number of... Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, is that right? And money is the priority rather than yes. goods and Yeah, and well, you know, and yeah, yes, absolutely. We've got a disaster relief fund set up um, for the Mayor's and Chair of Hawke's Bay. Uh, and we, you know, incredibly grateful for any donation. You know, what we're hearing is um, some of our families don't have insurance for their homes. And uh, mm. as you drive around our district at the moment, you see mountains upon mountains of household goods uh, and that we are trying to deal with. Some people have insurance and, uh, you know, will manage and get through, but others won't. And so being able to help those um, to be able to even deal with their waste, uh, that's, you know, our first and foremost priority because uh, that makes people feel better. After having the power on, it's been able to have a clear space around their, around their home so they can get back and access and think, you know, what are the next steps? Thank you very much for joining us. The very best of wishes. Um, we will talk to you again, I'm sure, sometime in the future, but all power to you, Sandra. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. Thank you.